Hi there, welcome. We are back. I can't believe it. Ball and Sense season three. Hey, everybody. Hope you're well. Hope you're good. Hope you crossed over okay into 2021. Um, 2020 was a lot. And for some of us, the crossover into 2021 has also been quite intense. And if it has been rough for you, we're definitely thinking about you and praying for you. But we're really glad to be back. We're really glad to um, be with you again. Um, for those of you who don't know who we are, this is a Black African woman. And our show is called Bo Uncensored. So what we try to do with Bo Uncensored is basically bring our chat group conversation to the screen in a more structured way um, because we don't want to waste your time and we respect you and we love you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's basically the, what um, the inspiration behind Bo Uncensored was um, and is. And um, generally what we try to do here at the Black African Woman is, for the Black African Woman, is to, is it, our aim and our praise that you are seen and that you're heard and, you f and that you feel inspired by everything that we do here on our platform. And yeah, man, we're creating this family, we're creating this community, and we just really would love to hear from you. And we hope that you really um, are benefiting from what we're doing here. So yes, man, 2021, we are trying. We've got a lot of interesting things that we have cooked up for you this year. And you're definitely going to be hearing more about it. And if you are not following us and not watching this for the very first time, Firstly, subscribe to our YouTube page. Secondly, go follow us on all across social media. We're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, and we are on Facebook. So you can hear and find out more of what we are doing. So, um, and for this year, what we're going to be doing is just a continuation of the conversations we had last year. And just really issues covering from our faith to our lives to relationships, to work, to career, to figuring out who we are as women. We're just Christian women who are really just trying to figure out this life thing. So welcome. And ladies, how are you? Hello. Hello, hey. everybody. How are you guys um, doing? Oh, we're alive. Well, I'm alive, you know. <laughs> got breath in my body. <laughs> yeah, honestly, honestly. So yeah, of those, you're just like, okay, I'm here. I'm still kicking. That's what mm. counts. So no, mm. doing okay. How are you, Larry? I'm good. I'm good. And I've realized that I have not done the most important thing is introduce who we are. So <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly the break was clearly long. So uh, the lady in the black is Rumbi. And uh, Rumbi is our marketing maven behind uh, the Black African woman. And the lady with the glasses and the really cool pink jersey is Sonia. <laughs> she is the founder behind the Black African Woman. And my name is Larissa, and I'm the one who generally handles the, con uh, the content here at Bo. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is us. This is this is us. This is our team. Um, and we're really glad to be here with you guys. So today, what are we going to be talking about? We're going to be talking about whether this actually feels like a new year. Mm. You know, like that's actually a question. Like, wait. Does 2021 actually feel like a new year? Let me sip my tea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you can, I think that's an answer. So, um, it's, so basically, that's what we're going to be talking about, like new year, new you. So, uh, and that's the question. Is, this, is it a new year? Does it feel like the same old? Do you feel uh, like there's hope? Or do you feel like, man, we're just really flowing from one to the other? So ladies, how are you? How was the crossover into the new year? It was weird, if I can go first. It was strange it. because typically end of the year, there's a distinct difference between like one year to the next. But especially still being here where I am, still being under lockdown, it felt like I was just like the days were just rolling and just kept rolling in from the next year. So the transition hasn't been as, you know, like feeling like this huge hope. I think I approached the new year with caution because 2020 showed us that mm. um, fire, fire, you may fire. have plans, but uh, <laughs> hey. plans will have you. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, mm. yeah, Ben, Sonia. Mm. Yeah, um, I think yeah, I can really relate. So for me, it was also really sad because around 8 p.m. New Year's Eve, got news that um, one of our uncles from like this home church that I'm part of passed away. Yeah. Um, from COVID and it was just so surreal, just didn't make sense, you know? And 
you know, celebrating New Year in my own space by myself, you know, New Year usually with people, mm. yeah. Out, um, even if it's just at home with like family, but I was on my own, and at least I had my sister and her boyfriend to virtually keep me company into the year. But it was really, really, it was just a mixed emotions. It was like I'm so glad I made it over, but I'm so sad other people didn't make it were important to me. Um, and I'm nervous what's gonna happen, you know. So, mm. I mean, yeah, that's the thing, man. I can totally re- relate, hey, like, um, I mean. Mm. I mean, I was able to go see my family. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, Sonia and I are based in Johannesburg and Rumbi is based in, um, how am I forgetting the city? Prague. The Czech Republic. The Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Czech Republic. <laughs> in Prague. Um, and so I was able to visit my family um, outside of South Africa. And look, lock, again, lockdown um, where I was, um, 8 p.m. was the curfew. Whoa. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly right mm-hmm. so uh curfew 8 p.m until 4 to 6 a.m um mm-hmm. and um i mean these girls know um previously generally new year's would be up until four in the morning like mm-hmm. we'd normally start the new year do prayers with the parents and then i'd generally like be out with my with my with my siblings um and then yeah and um and so 8 p.m so i was staying at one of my brother's houses so before like I think around six or seven years eve we went over to pray with my mom and dad and then we went back to their house we were in our pajamas and so I was like pushing for everyone to stay up until midnight because mm-hmm. they're trying to fade by 10 p.m I was like oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Ruby was trying to fade also I was like girl no guys no fading <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you cross over. <laughs> mm. and look it was super quiet um and I guess it was like a lot more reflective, like you guys mm. are saying, you know, just um, it, it was strange. It was like none of that, like happy. It was just like, OK, it's midnight. Yeah, we made it. OK, let's go to sleep. I mean, <laughs> like just past midnight, you know, yeah. um, and and I think that's just what 2020 was. I feel like it was this weird, like alternative universe situation mm. and yeah. Um, and just moving from day to day, month to month. Um, and maybe we can talk a bit about that, guys. Like, what is your 2020 year experience like for you personally? Like, and what is that like spiritually, emotionally, like whatever you want to talk about? Hmm. This time, Sonia, you can sure, start. Yeah. I think. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, I think 2020 was. Yeah. I don't know what the words are, but for me personally, it was like a pull between two two op- opposing forces. On the one hand, it really broke me down. You know, I it was a completely different experience being by myself all the time. I get my energy being around people. Yes, I like my own time, but I also need to be around others. And especially that in lockdown in South Africa, which was like in March, for about uh, a month before I returned to work was really tough um, and painful. And it really brought to the surface uh, sort of the love and care and attention I needed to give myself that I was probably crutching, using from others as a crutch. Mm. It was painful to see like, gee, Sonia, you need to learn to, uh, you know, be your own go-to person and love love on yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, that you know you can't really fully rely on anyone else so that was really tough and like just not knowing when next I'll see my family you know and all of that and like job situation people were being laid off left right and center mm. but then on the other end it was amazing it was like my year of uh, blossoming you know I really came out of my shell I found my voice I, I found my 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 reason for being, I mean, I think I've always known it, but I really was now walking more in it and I could see it more clearly. Um, and amazing opportunities just came my way and I started really serving more in in my calling. So yeah, I would say that was my experience. Mm-hmm. Ruby? I mean, what are you gonna say after that? Be like, yeah, mm-hmm. it was, it was right. No, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, um, it was an out-of-body experience. I think 
it really felt like I was living in a dystopian movie, like Handmaid's Tale or something. Um, right. You know, it's one of those things where you really realize your mortality, your humanity, uh, mm. and that kind of thing. So, made some good changes in my life, which I needed to, which were great in the midst of all this weirdness and this like yeah. unpredictability, if there's such a word. But um, very also really made me realize that I am alone, like being so far away from home. Mm-hmm. And so it was kind of like this weird, I've gone a year now without seeing anyone from home where the year before I saw so many friends and, you know, Sonia came to visit. And so it was this like weird dance, but I think it also felt like a cleansing. Like it's like the world needed yeah. to shed a lot of gunk. You know, we mm-hmm. had our priorities mixed up and I know people have said this over and over again, but we needed to be challenged. And, and I've said this before, the beauty of it was seeing how nature carried on as per normal, but we as humans were locked up, afraid in our homes, which is like, y'all think you're the greatest gift to this earth, right? but be careful, you know? Like, yeah, who really you know, wants this? yes, exactly. <laughs> so that's, that's, I think that was my experience. This weird dance, mm-hmm. a lot of introspection, you know, reprioritizing like what is important and why yeah mm-hmm. and um i mean at least for me the beginning was such a uh like a mental shake because y'all know i, I don't sit still i'm never home mm-hmm. I'm just like yes hey yes. you know um I, I had started um improving like okay Larissa, like one weekend a month make sure you're home you're resting you're recuperating mm-hmm. but i'm a Yo, social butterfly. Mm. I mean, butterfly is a strong word, but like, I mean, (laughs) if you live in Johannesburg, right? Like, Mm. there's live music, there's um, people to see, there's, you know, you just, that was really my life. So, and also with with my work, I I, I was sometimes a few times a year, I was out of the city or out of of the country. So, to like be stuck in this apartment. I mean, thankfully, I mean, you guys were by yourselves, but I mean, thankfully I have a roommate, a really awesome roommate, but Mm -hmm. it was still like the days didn't feel any different. Like you lost, I I lost count of days, I lost lost count of, you know, and um, I think what helped me was getting busy again because we started doing things with Bo and and like the different things that I do privately, um, you know, I was able to assist and and lend my hand in in a couple of different ways. Um, it kept me busy. I'm clearly, listen, when they talk about idle minds being problematic, mine yeah. cannot be idle. It's literally not good for my spirit. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> because it just, like, my mind goes on and on, you know, because mm-hmm. so much was happening. I mean, I think definitely recently um, with the second waves across the world, a lot more people have been dying. Mm, yeah. Um, but I think, um, and the segues into what I want us to talk about next, like just in terms of our experience of our faith being shaken, um, is I think for me being so far away from my parents um, and 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 having um, the brother who I used to live with in another city, and as y'all know, I have two members of my family who are on the front line, mm. both medical professionals. Um, and worrying about them, worrying about them being exposed. And if they were, like, how would they be able to deal with it? Mm. Um, And all of us being on lockdown, all of us. So I think that was it because people were, I think that's the thing that I struggled with is a question like, God, why are some people going through this and others aren't? Mm. Why are some Mm. people surviving and others Mm. aren't? Mm. Why are people losing their jobs and others aren't? Why do I still have my Mm. job? Like, why is it like because I personally don't think it's a matter of some people deserve this or they didn't or something like Mm. I I don't really don't think so and Mm. I definitely don't believe so I don't believe that's how God works but for me it was a more questioning Mm. you know especially with what's happened recently I mean um as we're recording this uh, Sonia and I just heard that um a friend of ours from another church lost their Mm. mom Mm. so it's just 
like I think it's just this question like God I can't figure it out I mean like why um so honestly that's just in terms of what's affected my faith it's still questioning and trying to figure things out like mm. God what's happening what's all this for what's this all what's what's the meaning of all of this you know and I don't know that we'll figure it out now um mm. I'm not necessarily a end times enthusiast like that's not my vibe <laughs> 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 Coming so close, Larry. <laughs> what? Get with the program. <laughs> like, like, you know, like conspiracy theories, and this is mm. what is happening. Whoa, whoa. I'm, I'm like, eh, I, I don't know. I don't know, and mm. and I don't know that like thinking that and having those conversations are necessarily helpful. Um, it may be s- s- helpful for some, but for me, it just builds. It adds more anxiety for me. Yeah. Um, anyway, yes. so yeah. um, yeah. Uh, Well, I think, you know, it's funny you're asking that. I literally had this conversation with God last night. And I was like, how is it I am still, like, how does it work? Like, you know, you're trying to ask me, like, what's the strategy here? Like, (laughs) how am I still here? How am I still present? Like, why me? Um, And it's tough, right? Because you're like, did those people deserve to die? I don't think so. I don't think anyone deserved to die. Good people have gone. You know, really. So it's one of those things, definitely had those questions, but also on the other spectrum, I felt God's grace and like mercy on my life. You know, like you're saying, why do I still have a job? Why do I, it's like literally like, yo, I don't know what I did to deserve this, but I best be doing the things for you, God. Like I best not be, you know falling short do you get what i mean so Mm -hmm. it's it's that so it's definitely tested faith um and helps me realize this idea of living for the future is incredibly incredibly flawed yeah and i know we learn about you know in buddhism they talk a lot about you know being in the present present and i think in christianity we don't really understand we just kind of like oh press through the struggles and you know mm. like the free, hope is coming god is coming and and i mm. i know there's the benefit of that but do we ever really talk about living in the moment yes and accepting and embracing where we are currently without thoughts of oh jesus is going to come or do you get what i mean not to say yep. but are we are we immersed in jesus's presence are we are we soaking it up? Like, what does God want us to understand in the here and now? And it mm. really brought that affront to me. That mm. Right? Mm, yeah. yeah. Because you don't know what's yeah. going to happen tomorrow. You're literally yes. living from day, day, day to day. Day by day. Mm-hmm. Moment. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, we're all, I mean, full disclosure, we're all control freaks here. Yep. All of us. <laughs> all of yep. us. So the whole concept of, uh, I really... Okay, firstly, we really had no control over anything. Also, <laughs> to begin with, we mm. didn't. But it's like it's like it's it's like we needed to be slapped across the face and be yeah. like, "Yo, you really literally have zero control. You literally do not know mm. what's going to happen tomorrow." Mm, um, yeah. And uh, yo, it's it's. And hard. what are you supposed to be doing in the here, in the now, in the moment? What are you supposed to be doing? And because a lot of our Christianity is performative thinking yes. about what I have to do to show that I'm a good Christian, that I'm mm. X, X, Y, Z. When all that is taken away, there's no one to perform. You ain't going to church. I mean, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like Nobody's watching you. Oh, nobody's so watching you. So it's, oh. it's like, what are you supposed to be doing in those moments? And what does it mean to commune with God? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now I can relate. I think for me, I was reflecting on this question. I was like, my faith was tested and found wanting bad. Mm. Mm. Really. Um, I I think I had textbook faith before this. Mm. Uh, really? Which I think a lot of us as Christians do, like what we'll yeah. be saying, because we've been, you know, I'll keep going back to this, but the Enneagram speaks about different personalities and like how we perceive the world. There's nine different personalities and majority of the world world about 51 percent of the world are sixes and the sixth personality struggles with fear that's their perception they live through the lens of i'm afraid 
So mm. they were prone to to give into a body, like an organized body, like Christianity, like a church, mm-hmm. um, because then it minimizes the fear. And I really saw that this year because we have all these rituals, we have all these things that are in place and they're there to placate our fears. And I feel like God this mm-hmm. year was y'all are playing with me. You're not experiencing me. Mm. Created a cushion to make yourself feel safe. But that's, mm. I am in the real things. And so, you know, I think like my faith was really unearthed and revitalized because like what you guys are saying, I had to really surrender. I think I learned to surrender. Mm. I really learned like, I got into more into meditation, yoga, breath work. I know Christians won't really feel those things, but (laughs) yeah, yeah. But for me, like really, I think I met God for Mm. real Mm. by just being and saying, you know what? I don't know. I'm here. You chose for me to still be here Mm. for whatever reason. Please show me what that reason is. And life is so much easier. It flows better, you know. I'll definitely say it was it was really challenged. Like I was broken down, guys. Mm. <laughs> and yo, know, guys, like, and um, because there's this cyclical guilt. I think sometimes we live with just in terms of being a Christian. Like, I think going back to that performative lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I went to church. Mm-hmm. I read mm-hmm. my devotion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I. I'm active in church. I'm mm-hmm. helping with the youth. I'm helping with praise team. I'm, I'm figuring. I'm helping with lunch. And then when all of that is is like removed from you, when you are alone in your space, are you are? How do you commune with God? How do you um? Do you want to talk to Him? Mm-hmm. I personally, I definitely had dips. Um, I definitely <laughs> had dips of. I'm not sure if I want to talk to you right now. Yeah. Though. Um and um it's but it's it's kind of like you you come back right so it's mm-hmm. it's it, again it, it's cyclical because in as much as yeah yeah you have you have challenges you're, you're asking it's like really um um ish, you know data <laughs> um you you sign up, you, you go through the cycle of do I really want to do this? Everything gets exhausting. I definitely went through a point where Zoom church was getting exhausting. Life was getting mm-hmm. exhausting, like getting motivated to, mm-hmm. to work. I mean, you know, during the week, you're doing your work, even though it's at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, the motivation is just really dipping, you know. Um, you have very, very little to look forward to. Um, you can't really go outside and everything. But as things started yeah. to improve, we were able to go out now and again. I was able to see Sonia, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, for the first, like, Hi. like, Person, you know things like yeah. that um and as much as like spiritually things were affected i can definitely say i benefited in that the people i was close to were a lot more intentional about communicating with each other mm-hmm. i spoke to my siblings so i have brothers and for those of you who have brothers brothers don't talk like you're lucky if you like have a conversation that's so true (laughs) right so Mm -hmm. these guys are sisters so they literally talk every day Mm -hmm. like so so um i think for me it was great because we were literally able to um talk at least once a week you know Mm -hmm. and do a video call i mean mom and i would talk all the time but dad maybe every two three weeks now we had like at least every Saturday afternoon, I'd video call my parents, like, how are you? How was your week? Da, 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 da. So mm. it was really, um, it was really, really dope. But guys, like, what do you, to sort of just round off this conversation, I think mm. we all agree that um, the, the crossover and the transition into this new year doesn't feel new because mm-hmm. we're still dealing with COVID. We're still on lockdown, even though there's a promise of people getting vaccinated and things like that. Um, it's still far away for some of us. If you yeah. are in yeah. the global north, it's great for you. But the rest of us in Africa, we're not sure when we're going to get the vaccine. <laughs> you know? Ruby will tell us first. <laughs> Bruh, I'm squish mm-hmm. right. mm-hmm. um, And um, so it, it, it's felt, it's, 
Okay, I, I can say the only difference I feel from getting into 2021 is I do feel slightly more energized because mm -hmm. I know what this looks like, right? So mm -hmm. this has sort of become normal. Mm -hmm. I think the challenge will be as we transition to a time when there won't be a COVID anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I, think, I think that's, for me, it doesn't feel new, but I, I feel more energized. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's a case of I've mentally accepted what mm -hmm. it is that we are in, or um or i rested because i didn't get to work for three weeks you know mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah what is it for you ladies like what is like the big takeaway for you for this new year yeah well yeah. or i mean i guess like what is the lesson that you learned of yourself in 2020 that you feel is carrying you as you're moving into this new year yeah even though it doesn't um, feel yeah it doesn't yeah like no. It doesn't. Um, I think what I what I really took, like when I entered into the new year, usually I have this like excitement, you know, I have my word for the year and like, you know, this year is going to be like this and that, like it's easy. It comes naturally because I guess you, we're on the move. So you, your, your momentum, even mentally and emotionally is going. And with what happened in 2020 and even how we entered it, we were forced to like pause and stop and uh, I, I remember I started the year and I was like, and people were like really excited, but I wasn't, I just couldn't mm. that train. And I didn't understand why, but I didn't fight it because that's something I took in, took from 2020. Don't fight the, the flow, mm. don't fight the resistance the, or the feeling. So I sat in it and after a few days, it hit me like, um, there's nothing I'm waiting for. I already have mm, mm. and I already am what I need. Mm, mm, oh, and I think that's for me what I really took from 2020. And that's what I'm taking as I go into 2020. And stop waiting for this aha magical moment. You mm. are okay. You are already that. Mm. Just open it. Yeah. That's deep. Dips. Yeah. This is actually the founder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it's so deep and i think for me a 2020 transition the transition 2020 to 2021 um uh 2020 was the shock 2021 mm. is the after mm, aftermath like mm. slim shady's album um was it or dr dre slim shady <laughs> yeah the real slim shady we don't know who that is yeah, yeah we, we don't, don't know who that is, is. <laughs> Is that Eminem? Uh, Eminem, sorry, my bad. <laughs> but literally, it's one of those, like, I think in 2020, we're all dealing with it. <gasps> and then now we're thinking, okay, New Year. But now it's like, it's like uh, after a war, you've got to clean yeah. up. There's casualties. You've got to, and I think I have that feeling about 2021. Um, <laughs> in terms of what I've taken out of 2020 going into 2021 is honor yourself and mm. listen to yourself. Mm. I was not listening to myself. I was not honoring myself. And as a result, there's a lot of hard work that has had to go into, you know, trying to get to know my own voice and understand my own voice. And mm. part of that has also been therapy, like yeah. the need for an external someone I can speak to about all this you know that I'm processing um so and to be okay with that painful it's very painful very uncomfortable listening to yourself and hearing yourself without judgment because I'm I'm such a control freak as you said and I'm such a judge of my own character above anyone else's I'm very very hard on myself mm -hmm. so that's definitely been something I've had to kind of take into the new year. But also in a weird way, it's like my brain has opened up and God is speaking to me with all this creativity or ideas. Or, and it's like weird to be in this space. Like I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to finance. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in these four walls, like hello. Yeah. But also very grateful for that because it's keeping me energized and active. Yeah, yeah man. Um and I mean, just to really final, final question, because I was just thinking to myself, like, what did you learn um, about your walk with God um, and your relationship with God? Because um, 
I think for me, I realized firstly that I'd taken him for granted. Um, and and I was being hypocritical, honestly, because I I say that I'm in this relationship. I, I devote so much time to the things of God, um, but I am not... Um, I'm not investing or I'm not spending like the, the needed time, like actually yeah. learning, reading, the quiet time, things like that, you know, quiet time yeah. is very difficult for me. Yeah. I'm a, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, um, so, so for me, it was that because, um, right. Cause your faith being shaken, you're questioning a lot, you're sort mm. of into minds. And also there was just so many conversations last year and, and I don't know, it was like a shaking. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of the conversations that I was in were about God, who is he? How has he been brought to us? Like the whole, and like trying to figure out like um, the word God versus all the infrastructure institution mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. all the different things that have come along with that. And how does it affect? What do I really believe about that? What do I really think about it? What do I know about it? Yeah. And I was like, okay, no, this is a lot. So what... I've I'm at least taking into this new year is I'm 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 trying to take things back to 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 basics like mm-hmm. um who is God who is God to me what does He require of me um and and hopefully you know these new mm-hmm. learnings um um will assist um so that's what I'm really taking into 2021 and also to I've learned that either way you don't know so just just go for it <laughs> don't talk yourself out of anything I have talked myself out of so many things these guys know I've talked myself <laughs> out of so many things so yeah. even if I think sending the e- an email is ridiculous I'm going to send that email even if I think this job application well, is, um, wild even if I think this job specs are way above my skill set mm. i'm going to apply so yeah. i think that's what i'm really taking into this year is just go for it mm. what what are you gonna lose i think that's that's my, my mindset right now so yeah that's mm-hmm. it for me um nice. i'll just say i think for me um what my relationship with god is that he's been with me or he's been there all along um maybe i just wasn't listening enough and he's not holding a gun to your head Rumbi. he's not persecuting you he's not punishing you he's not judging you in that you know oh i'm gonna show you who's got no he's not it's you <laughs> and yeah. you need to release that those ideologies um because then he's ready to work so i think that's really what i've I'm starting to kind of grasp in my walk with God um, as we mm. go forward. Mm. Yeah. That song, there's a song that's going through my head right now. Sorry, I do this all the time. Uh, Make Room, Jonathan uh-huh. McReynolds. Mm. 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 Mm-hmm. Make Room. Yeah, I think for me, it's like uh, my relationship with God is come find me. I'm in the places you would least expect. Mm. I'd confine God to buildings, rituals, um, and certain like ways of life. And I've really experienced God in the most unexpected avenues. So mm. that's me, beautiful. Yeah. My, mine is like, come find me, come, come explore. I'm waiting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, on that really beautiful note, we have to end. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, as we said, we are the Black African women. This is us. This is who we are. Um, we hope that you were encouraged. We hope that we at least gave you um, something to think about. Um, we hope to see you soon. We're definitely going to be in your faces way more this year. So we look forward to seeing you. As I said, do the right thing. Subscribe to this YouTube page. <laughs> and after subscribing you go follow us follow us all over social media so we can talk to you and our website please do go on to our website too Uh, reach out to us dm us email us we want to hear from you what was your experience like share we'd really love to hear from you actually i think we should definitely start reading um, any yeah, other comments and stuff and comments and so we're gonna do that hey we are going if you call it can be anonymous so you can say whether or not we can mention your name uh we're definitely going to um be shouting you out and um and and sharing whatever you feel like you want us to share um from what you've sent to us so god bless and take care of
Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>